Hey everyone, Castellan here, welcoming you to another one of my LEGO Street Corner Tours. Today, our tour will focus on what could be the most famous uh, street corner in all of Legoland, the Ghostbusters Firehouse. But there's something a little different about this particular firehouse. It's been modularized. And we're getting off the tripod for a moment, just to give you a bird's eye view of the newly modularized building, and so that I can take a moment to explain why I modularized this building. The main reason is that the official LEGO Ghostbusters firehouse simply took up too much room. Uh, in order to access it at all, you needed the building open on all four sides, which, again, simply took up too much room. Uh, also, it stops being a corner building at that point because there's no building next to it. And I really felt that it looked important to have this as a corner building in my non-existent city. Also, rebuilding it uh, gave me a chance to do something else with it. Uh, mainly, rebuild it to be more like what I feel Ghostbusters should be. Now, while I have nothing against the official Ghostbusters movie, it's simply not the Ghostbusters I grew up with. To me, the real Ghostbusters will always be the real Ghostbusters from the cartoon. So rebuilding the uh, main building gave me a perfect excuse to rebuild the Ghostbusters themselves. I would have given them each their own individually colored uniform, but looking through my LEGO minifigure collection, I really didn't have uh, the proper jumpsuits. But I did do my best to make the uh, minifigures closer to the cartoon versions. That means Janine has those crazy glasses and that bright red hair, Egon had that wild blonde pompadour, and Peter had a bit more spiky hair. Doing this project also gave me an excuse to build my own custom Ecto-1. Uh, it came out a little more boxy than I like, but oh well. It is nice and coupe like It does have the uh, distinctive red tail fins that I remember from the cartoon, as well as some of the colored stuff up top. Give you a nice turnaround here see the fins again. Uh, you can sort of see from this angle, maybe. You can fit two of the actual Ghostbusters in there, side by side. And it also has a back hatch for your proton packs and any other gear that you may want to take on a mission. And here's the most important feature of this custom Ecto-1. It fits completely inside the garage of the firehouse. I can even close the doors with it inside. It's a little tricky. But it can be done. And now here's a first look at the interior of the building. Which brings us to the big issue that I had uh, modularizing this building. The fire pole. Uh, simply put, if you have removable levels, you really can't have a fire pole going all the way down from the uh, top to the bottom. The compromise I ended up coming up with was making most of the level removable, but leaving one, s but building up one side of the building all the way to the top, and including the fire pole in that area. That way, we can put it in, and as you can see, it is fully functional. When we get to the top floor, well, actually, it's accessible, you can't see it now, but it is accessible from the mid-floor and the top floor, which you will see when we get there. Another thing that was compromised in this design was easy access to the garage, both because the garage is a very tall area, thanks in mo no small part due to those uh, doors that came from the existing set, but also because of that uh, continuous wall, and the chunk of floor that I chose to put in it, it's really hard to access and even look at that bottom floor. But we're going to try our best. We're going to start off with the garage portion, which, as you can see, has the Ecto-1 in it. And we will take that out for just... Take that out just to make things a little easier. I salvaged the... Uh, <laughs> the alarm and from the original building and I also tried to salvage the lockers and even expanded them a little So that you can actually fit the proton pack inside them 
And then, completely separate from the garage, we have the office. Specifically, Janine's office. With her desk, mostly uh, sal uh, salvaged from the official set. And a second desk, if you can see it, which was also salvaged from the existing set, or from the original set. We have a corner staircase with some storage in the back corner, which really isn't used because it's really hard to get my hands back there. And now's a good time to talk about another area of the building that I felt needed improvements, the containment unit. Uh, to me, growing up, the containment unit always seemed like the central feature of the Ghostbusters universe. It was where you stored the ghosts. It made ghostbusting possible. And also, if you watched that old cartoon, the containment unit was massive. It filled up an entire basement. It really did look like a portal to another dimension. Uh, and I wanted a this containment unit to reflect that. And specifically, I wanted to contrast the real Ghostbusters containment units to the movie containment units, which of course inspired the Lego containment unit, which is just embarrassingly small. Yeah, I know it was that way in the movie, but I just wanted something better. So here's another look at the containment units in its true context. Uh, like the cartoon, it's big and red with a yellow backdrop. It is accessed from a little platform. It takes up most of the floor. It's not in the basement like it was in the cartoon, but that's because I can't build a basement here. And I also didn't want to stick it in the garage because, as I mentioned before, the garage is fairly full and hard to access. And I wanted to put this containment unit in a place where it could really dominate the, uh, the view. Uh, we'll try and take a look at the rest of this second floor, which is dominated by computers, boxes, sciencey stuff. It is basically Egon's lab, where all the ghost busting takes place. Uh, most of the equipment here is salvaged from the official Ghostbusters set, and if you have that set, you can probably recognize most of them. Though in a few places, I did build something all my own. And I'm going to take another moment to ramble on a little bit more about the containment unit, just to help explain why I felt it was the uh, it should be the centerpiece of this modification. Uh, as a child, I actually built my own kid-sized LEGO containment unit. Uh, it wasn't all big and red and great and everything, but it was semi-functional. Uh, because before I built that, I actually built my own kid-sized LEGO ghost traps with some functioning uh, uh, flaps. And uh, what was my favorite part of it back then, I built the uh, center of the ghost trap, the part that actually held the ghosts, uh, separate and attached it to the rest of the trap with a little Technic pin. So that with a little, little work, I could stick that into a bit of little Lego containment unit, uh, push it a little bit because I wasn't very good at the time, and the ghosts, the part of the ghost trap that held the ghost would come out of the trap and into the containment unit. And yeah, as a child, I was very proud of that. I have not taken the time to rebuild that now because, eh, I just haven't. Uh, but anyway, that sort of inspired me to try and make this particular containment unit as functional as possible. So I'm going to show you a little about a little bit of how it works. Uh, here's the containment unit, sort of as it would uh, stay most of the time. You can see there's a little flap. You bring that down. There is a pin in the center where you can place a ghost trap, lock it down, and close it back up, and voila! The ghost is now locked in the containment unit. Here is a quick look at just the kitchen in the upper floor. As you can see, most of the equipment is salvaged from the official set, but just rearranged. You can also see the staircase as it comes up from, ab from below. You can also see in this corner a little addition I need to add to keep the walls straight. 
uh, without this little block out, this wall would bend in or out, mostly in, and would not look very straight. On the other side of the building, I could brace the front wall against the side wall, but over here I needed to do a little something extra on both levels. It's not very noticeable, but it is noticeable if it wasn't there. And now the full third floor in context. While the second floor was all business, the third floor is all residence. So we'll start off with the kitchen, which is just like I showed you. It opens right into a common dining area with a couple of little tables. On one side, there is a hallway to the front windows. And, of course, the fire pole that we mentioned earlier. On the other side is a little walkway coming from the main staircase. And on that walkway, we have also a desk, a couch, and various shelves. You can also see I managed to salvage the fireplace from the official sets and stuck it in that living room. We have a bathroom, which... I think I gave more room than the official set, but for the most part just salvaged uh, existing equipment. And on the other side of the building we have the bunk room. I did make a couple important changes here. Uh, first, I put in four bunks because, hey, Winston deserves a bed. I also rebuilt the bunk uh, because I sort of insist that furniture in my uh, box are not only minifigure scale, but fully minifigure uh, accessible. As you can sort of see down below, the bed is big enough for the minifigures to sit and or sleep on. And I also, if I can do this holding the camera one-handed, built this so that the upper bunks could pop off easily allowing actual access to the lower bunks. And I did put in a couple of very generic furniture, some from the official sets, and of course, some custom. And a quick look at the roof, which is pretty plain, save for a handful of features that I picked up from uh, photos of the uh, real Ghostbuster firehouse. And now just some generic features that I forgot to go over earlier. Uh, I did sort of re-size, uh, well, re-pattern the side of the building to try and get some symmetry. Uh, the left side mostly is mostly symmetri uh, symmetrical to the right side. And I moved the man door to the side street so that it opened into Janine's office rather than the garage because the garage already had a door to the outside. I also added a few windows in the corner of the building in an attempt to get some light into the back of the building. And I chose this area of the building because I figured that uh, placing it against other modulars, this area would always be in an alley. And just because I never tore the old roof apart, it's worth taking a moment to just compare the old roof to the new roof, and therefore the old footprint, no, the official footprint to my modified footprint, uh, as you can see, my building is about four studs wider, but my building is about two or three studs shorter. So, all in all, about the same size. And there you have it, the complete LEGO Street Corner tour of my modular modification of the Ghostbusters Firehouse. All set to be placed in the modular city that I hope to eventually have room to put together. If you enjoyed what you saw, hit the like button. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. And as always, do please leave a comment, and I will see you next time. Bye.